Hi all, um, in this video I will be showing you how to use one of the uh, most interesting features of the Galaxy interface and one of the quite recently added ones and specifically how to launch um, integrated development environments um, into, uh, into the interface and specifically that we will be trying um, launching our studio. Um, for those who are not aware of it, our studio is a, an integrated development environment um, that is um, that helps that provides a graphical interface to R, and um, helps um, put out uh, code and, and, and execute uh, code uh, around R, include libraries and so forth. So the first thing to do in order to launch this um, active environment is to actually start R Studio here. So I've typed R Studio in tools. You see that there is an option here, and I click execute um, right here. So as you can see, um, a new um, job is appearing here on, on, on in my history. Uh, I will actually rename my history here as uh, ER Studio, um, our Studio Lesson. Um, and it might take a bit um, a while to start. Uh, and at some point it will turn on yellow um, at which page it will be um, ready to continue. Um, as you can see, um, our studio has just started running. Um, it's, it's worth noting that, um, as opposed to other jobs, the fact that there is an interactive session, an active track session running um, somewhere, uh, is indicated by the fact that this, is, um, this will not turn green, but rather stay in an, in an orange state. So we have our studio running, but the next question is how can we actually access it? So in order to do that, we go to user uh, menu and you can see here at the end, there's the active interactive tools section. If I click on that, uh, you see that RStudio is now listed here. Um, the RStudio name is an active link, so I can click on that. And um, you see that the RStudio environment is actually popping up into, um, into a new tab. Um, you can see the version of R that is running on the back end is version 4.0.2. And uh, there are some general information about um, the R version that is running on the back end, plus some um, interesting functions um, that um, we will be uh, touching about later. And you can see that they are, um, they are able to um, act as intermediary between the R Studio environment and Galaxy. You can put information from the Galaxy from R Studio into Galaxy and vice versa. So there is, they can be R Studio can be uh, literally a part of, of the execution pipeline. Another point that is worth uh, pointing out is that a lot of the um, quite extensively used um, packages in R uh, for bioinformatics are already installed um, for us on the back end, so we don't really need to to work on, on those. So. Before we continue on, just a quick um, intro for people who have um, not seen um, uh, the interface before. Um, there are th three main parts, and there is a fourth one that I will be activating in, in a bit. Um, actually, um, we can start by, um, by working on, 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 a, in a, on a more formal way. So this is the console where the commands are um, being executed and we can put one of the out. For example, I can type here two plus two and enter and it will print out the, the sum. So um, here you can see that I can put one command after the other. And um, this tab here is the environment and the history. So the history keeps all the commands that we've been um, using, we are executing. Uh, the environment will be maintaining all our variables and here on the last, um, on the last, um, on the bottom right, um, it's the files, plots, uh, packages, and help um, tab, where you can see the files that are already available for us. If it was a local installation, this will be our local folder. Any plots that we created, packages that are already active, as you can see here, or we can activate, um, help, which is one of the most critical parts of R and our studio. Um, and viewer for some plotting that we can, um, if we create interactive plots for, for this one. Um, and other panel that's quite useful and I will be starting um, right now um, is to create a, um, a text file, a script um, to be more precise, where we'll be putting our, all our commands in 
uh, one after the other so we can run it. So in order to do that, I, I go here to file, there is an option new file and I click on our script. So as you can see here, we have a brand new, um, uh, a brand new file, a brand new tab, um, which actually we can type easy enough. I can press enter as many times as I can. Um, I can type a few things here, which I will be touching also in a second. Um, and all of these um, can be captured in a file and that is, can be used as a script. As you can see right now, it has no name, plus the actual name is red with an asterisk, means that this is not yet saved. So the first thing that we should do is to actually save it. Uh, I can do this through here or by using the shortcut Control S, which will give us the indication of let's actually save this as, as, as a script. And uh, for our purposes, I'm going to put it as a Galaxy R basics. Um, I'm going to save this. And you see that now in our, in our files section down here, a new file has appeared, which has the extension .r. And the reason is that by, def by default, um, RStudio puts all the scripts as a, a, a .r file. Also, you can see here that the name have changed. And now this is a script that we can execute. Um, a few more things about um, the interface. So as I said earlier here, um, I can actually drag and drop all those points. So it can, we can customize how much of a surface we want for each of those tabs. Um, for the time being, I want to um, show how we can run a command on the console. One of the easiest commands is to type date uh, in parentheses, so this is a function. If I press enter, you can see that it prints out um, uh, the, the time, the date, um, that this uh, video is actually uh, put together. Another thing that we can do, um, so as you can see now, we have pasted the command and I have to press enter and it directly gave me um, the response. I can do the exact same thing here by putting date and parentheses. And this time around, if I press enter, nothing will happen because as I said before, this is a file that captures all the commands that we will be using. So what I can do, uh, the idea is it's much more easy to edit if we put in the text file that we can um, edit again and again, uh, add more commands and make it more structured way. Plus another thing is that we can put um, comments. So here, what I will write is, um, gives the current date and time. So comments start with the um, hashtag um, symbol. And this is on line one. And everything after the hashtag is completely ignored by R when executing. So here I put a comment so that I can remember later on when I, I review this, that what this actual command is going to be doing. Um, I pressed enter, new line, I press the command enter and so forth. And now what I can is I can save it. I press control S and I can start running um, one line after the other. So there are three main ways of, of doing something, of executing something. I can highlight everything. And then as you can see, there is a button here called run, which if I hover about, it says that I can run either the current line or the selection. Here I've selected lines one, two, three, and four. So if I run this, you see down here in the bottom that it actually executed the command, the comment, first of all, it did nothing because it's a comment, the new line, no comment. So we just um, create a new line, then the actual command and the output and, and, and the new line. I can do this also line by line. So I can click this one and it reads out um, the, the first command that it sees or alternatively, I can um, shift enter on a particular command, sorry. Um, and um, in this case, I actually execute the specific line as you can see here. So control plus, sorry, a control plus enter. Let me put this in a comment here. Control plus enter, uh, which is the equivalent as command plus enter in Mac, if I remember correctly. And this allows us to, um, allows to execute this line only. I'm saving get the script. So this uh, gives some, some information. Um, 
We can try a few more commands here. I'll put here, for example, the deer um, command. I'm going to paste also the session info, um, like here, session info. Also, as you've just seen, um, there is the option of um, uh, RStudio is helpful enough. So it realized what, what is the function I'm trying to type. And it gave me um, some uh, information. As you can see, I picked sys. It gives me already a list of different um, commands that I can use. I'll press time here and the question and the parentheses and, and, and now I can run them. So for example, I can run them one by one. So control enter this one and it actually gives us a listing of, 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 of our home of the current working directory. Um, the session info is one of the most useful um, functions, especially if we want to replicate um, for someone else to replicate our work. It gives a clear information about what is already available, what are the um, libraries that are available for R, what are the, the, the loaded libraries and everything else. And the last one actually gives us um, the current time um, and it, it changes up until second. So it changes uh, if I run multiple times, it will give um, a, a, a new value. Um, so, uh, again, this is a no script. Let me save it again, now that it was uh, highlighted in R. A, 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 a good thing to keep in mind is that, um, let me start working directly now onto the script part, is that um, R, and R Studio in that case, is um, case sensitive, which means that uh, when we type something, we need to be um, to be uh, careful how to type it. So for example, if I typed sys time like that, um, it will give me an error as you can see here uh, that I cannot find function sys time because this is case sensitive. I'll put this as a comment. Um, R is case sensitive, uh, which means the following command will produce an error. Um, so, um, this is how basically we can interact with our studio. Um, just to provide some additional context, um, it might be interesting to highlight some basic aspects of, of R. So, one of the first things that might be useful to know is how to ask for help. So, let's say that we want to, um, to uh, use a function that will round a number to its um, nearest integer. So let's say round to nearest integer. The actual function that does that is called round. Uh, sorry, round. Uh, if I put pi 3.14 and I execute this by pressing control enter, you see that the output down here is, is three. So two points to keep in mind. First is that um, this is a function and we know that it's a function because it has parentheses. In the same context, this time is a function, session inference is a function, DIR is a function and date is a function. And as a function, it might expect zero input or one or more. And um, if we want to learn more about how round, for example, might work with, we can put the question mark round which basically says, okay, can you give me some information about the function round? By doing that, you see that in, in this tab down here, down right, um, we have now more information about how we can use round altogether, not as the function itself, but generally for rounding. So you see that it is ceiling, floor, trunk, round that we were actually looking for and additional information about those. And you can see that this round here as well. I can also do round specifically for this function. And now it will give me the same page because apparently it's the same page for, for both those things. And you can see now that for example, round has also an alternative way of, 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 of request information. In this case, it's um, not only what is the input, um, the, the number, number that we want to round, but also how to how many digits we want to do that. So we can do round 3.4, 14, 
And this time I want the digits to be one. And if I run this, you see that it's rounded out to, the, to one digit after the dot. Um, so it's 3.1. It might be interesting to try a different variation of that um, and uh, get some information about if this might work. So if I do round 3.14159 and I can play for digits equals two, it will give me the 314, which is the original value. We can try um, the same thing with no argument. Um, so round 3.14159 and run this. And you can see that by default, and the default value is seen here in the help function, um, it is uh, provided as output um, three. Um, if you want to need for to look for formal help, um, this tab right here is your friend. For example, let's say that we want to uh, learn more, more about t-test. I can type here t-test, press enter, and it will give me all the information that as you can find around t-test. All the information, how it can be used, what are the different functions already available that actually provides information about that. Uh, so for example, you can see so down here that there is an actual function in the stats package called t-test, which is the same t-test. If I click on that, it leads me directly onto how, how it is syntax, what the expect as input, what, what is the different um, arguments that they expect as input for the function and so forth. We will be, we will be looking all those things um, specifically when we start working on, on additional um, functions for R. Final point um, is um, to, uh, as I said earlier, uh, R Studio is very helpful in, in giving information out. So let's say, for example, we want to do um, linear modeling. I can type LM um, and um, I can start looking for um, information about that. So what I did, I tapped LM and press tab. As soon as I press tab, you see that R Studio and popped up with the different aspects, the different ways that we can use LM. And also if I hover over each of those, it gives you information about its works. So here um, we, need, we see that the base function LM is used to fit linear models um, and it expects a formula, a data, subsets, weights, and so forth. And also it gives us some information about what are the default values. For example, the default method is, is QR and we can um, change different aspects of the whole, of the whole thing. So um, this is a very quick and um, uh, intro into how RStudio can be launched and uh, what are the different aspects of RStudio um, here. Uh, I'm going to go back to Galaxy. Uh, so as you can see, it's still running. And if you want to actually stop it, you need to click on, on, on this icon here and press on stop. This will terminate uh, this particular session. Um, it will remove the job from, from your history and you will not be able to access um, the R Studio server again. Before you do that, um, the recommendation would be to save if you have anything here uh, from your environment back into Galaxy, or if you created any files and uh, you download directly from here, for example, by clicking on that, you can use as, um, as, as um, move to or export and you can save them all to your um, local directory. Um, and um, with that, this is um, into to the RStudio uh, in Galaxy. Um, there is a, a very helpful tutorial that covers all those aspects into the training material. And um, I hope you found this useful.